Welcome back to New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. We are already discussing this with other nations. We've got that story, plus the new abnormal. But first, our first story on this episode 418 of New World Next Week coming up this weekend, August 29th, 2020, Unite for Freedom protest. There is a planned anti-lockdown, anti-mask, anti-contact tracing, essentially anti-all the emergency measures that the UK government has taken. There is a protest coming up this Saturday, August 29th, in Trafalgar Square, which, if you didn't know, is the public square in the city of Westminster in the, of course, central London. There are, James, and you and I kind of talked about this a little bit before we were rolling. There are, obviously, all kinds of other protests around the world. I can include a link to what seems to be somewhat of a Nigerian garbled posting of an AFP article, Coronavirus Protest, around the world. But the the sort of flip side devil's advocate argument, James, I'll grab a comment from where we grab our main story from offguardian.org. The flip side devil's advocate argument to this in a comment says, your march to nowhere on their sacred ground sigil powers them up. James, that's a esoteric way to get rolling on this New World Next Week episode, but I think it's probably time. Yeah. Much better to sit at home and do nothing to fight what's going on, guys. This comment brought to you by the 77th Brigade. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that doesn't deserve our attention. What does deserve our attention is, as you say, there are a lot of protests that are coming. So let's use the comment space here for anyone who is promoting any sort of events or knows of anything that's going on. Let's get this information out there. Uh, one thing that I do know that was supposed to be coming up this weekend was Germany. Now, uh, you will cast your mind back to the beginning of this month, and you will remember that in on August 1st, there was a big demonstration in Berlin. A few dozen scraggly far-right extremist fringe protesters or a million people who are concerned about uh, the complete evisceration of all of, uh, civil rights, uh, depending on which source you trust. But at any rate, uh, a large demonstration took place in Berlin at the beginning of the month. One has been planned for this weekend, but... Latest that I could find breaking from offguardian.org, Germany bans coronavirus protest. Yes, the Berlin government has banned a planned protest against measures put in place to allegedly contain the coronavirus, in quotes, pandemic. The event scheduled for the 29th of August and coinciding with protests in other countries, including the UK, France, and Canada, has been shut down by the Berlin Senate over fears the crowd would violate the current infection protection laws. And this article goes on to uh, absolutely lambaste this decision, coming as it does in the midst of all of the officially approved protests that are taking place around the world. I mean, for example, the anti-government protests in Belarus. We're all Belarusians now, right? Because they're against those damn Russians, mostly. Uh, but uh, as are the A-level results protests in the UK. Yes, there are protests over the A-level results going on right now. Perfectly fine. And of course, in America, Black Lives Matter, perfectly fine. But this protest is the protest that will spread infection. Of course, as we all know. Anyway, I certainly hope that all ger good German citizens will dutifully comply with the lawful orders that are being given to them by their, their elected authorities who can tell them what protests to do and not to do. I wouldn't want to see anyone disregarding these lawful orders to stay home because that would be terrible and we must dutifully listen to whatever we are told by the government. Right, everybody? Right. Anyway, as I say, please, uh, people who are involved in any of these actions are, are planning to attend them. Please do spread information about them uh, so that other people can join you because there are many, many, many millions upon millions upon millions of people around the world who are concerned about what's happening right now. And it is time to stand up to this. If you don't understand why, please read my most recent article on Resistance is Fertile. I think it's an important read, uh, especially for right now, because Resistance is necessary, and I guarantee if people do not resist, if they just lie down and do nothing a year from now, five years from now, ten years from now, you will wish you were in the position you are in today, because it will get a hell of a lot worse. And it brings up, of course, all the historical precedents of wondering what Germany might do. How could those people have sat around while t complete tyranny took... We're replaying it again right now. And it's, yeah, James, I mean, we've... It's gone full nutball here in America. So we'll see what goes down here. 
this weekend. And that's how we left off, I think, on our last New World Next Week episode before we took a little summertime off. We were talking about, again, the downplay of how many people actually came out. Uh, I don't know. Man, there's so many, so many things. Good grief. Again, when we go back through these episodes over these last now six plus months, this is going to be laying out, again, so very many things. And you're talking, what about five, ten years from now? Your kids are in plastic cages in school. I don't know what I can think up for five years from now because they'd all be dead probably. James, that's the uh, fantastic way we kick off here on episode 418 of New World Next Week. We appreciate folks giving us some time off in the summer as we always need a little bit of time off at the very least, of course, in the dog days of summer. And we move to our second story, James, where I know our buddy Brock West, the amazing video editor of New World Next Week and everything there in the Corbett kingdom, he was on Twitter very recently basically saying how glad he was he had made it out of Australia before they went full-on lockdown, and we'll make a couple of notes on that at the end of this episode. But I think in different, similar ways, similar things are playing out in a different crown country, and that would be the one that you came from, James. The Carney Freeland Green Reset shapes Canada's new normal. James, I didn't even know that there was already the Green Reset. Things move fast. Surprising ruptures have shaken the Canadian political landscape as Trudeau's Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland announced that she would add Finance Minister to her portfolio the day after scandal-ridden Bill Morneau stepped down from the position on the evening of August 16th. As Freeland gave her remarks to the press, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau also announced that Ottawa's Parliament would be requesting that the Queen's Governor General prorogue Parliament until the end of September, all sorts of, again, somewhat arcane parliamentary procedures that, of course, us here in the States have just no idea about, myself included, whereby a new throne speech would announce a new green economic restart for the Canadian economy, James, or as more simply the Globe and Mail puts it, Freeland replaces more now as finance minister, parliament prorogued ahead of September 23rd throne speech. James, if there is, again, a move to be made on any level of the powers that shouldn't be, they are making it. Eh? <laughs> nice. 100% yes. And so for anyone in the audience who is interested, or especially for any Canadians in the audience, I would suggest, I would really suggest they go and follow the link through to the global research article we're referring to here, uh, because it goes through this in uh, a, a lot of detail that is important, because I know that the Canadian media right now is focusing on the wee charity scandal. Oh my god, uh, politicians are throwing money at charities that their families are connected to. Who would have thunk it? And that's the big scandal. And oh, look, they're trying to prorogue Parliament so to defer these committee meetings and all of that. Uh, that is the sideshow, and this article really gets to the, the heart of it, which is the complete destruction, the controlled demolition of the global economy that is taking place right now, and what is coming on the back of that, the Great Global Reset, the Green Reset, and the way that that's being framed in the Canadian context is particularly interesting because it involves not just Christia Freeland, uh, C a CFR-type crony who's always on Fareed Zakaria and is basically the voice of the establishment in Canada these days, but also involves Mark Carney, previous Bank of Canada governor who got shuttled over to the Bank of England to become the Bank of England governor, who is now the UN Special Envoy on Climate Action, uh, with all of the, that entails in this new green economy that they've been pumping. I talked about that at the end of last year. Well, it, uh, uh, as this article points out, as I didn't even notice uh, at the time, just a couple of weeks ago, Trudeau brought Mark Carney, Carney on as a special advisor to help uh, craft an economic recovery plan for Canada during this Great Reset time. So once again, all the globalist insiders are swir swirling and circling around and, as you say, making their moves right now. This is how it's taking place in the Canadian context. And of course, it's about the economic reset, but it's about the green reset. And it's about all of these things, all of the Agenda 2030 items. Well, let's move it up to 2020. And it is happening right now. So yes, there's a lot of fireworks, we charity scandal and all of that. But the real story story is here, so I hope people will go and read this story. Well, and that's, you know, again, there's a constant misdirection, and I, I often wondered and wistfully thought that, you know, all this technology would make people be somewhat more media literate, more media savvy, but the complete opposite has been the case, sadly, at least so far. 
Uh, James, let's uh, keep trudging through this rather depressing return of Neural next week with our third and final story that isn't just one, but a bunch of stories. I think we did this somewhat recently, James. Again, it's kind of tough to keep up. Again, not that New World Next Week was ever going to cover every single comprehensive thing that happens in the week. We've always been trying to give you three main stories with an overview, and we used to do it in under 10 minutes. But there's so many things going on. Uh, let me just blast through some of the... Uh, you know, just some of the other news stories, James. I'll kind of set them all up, and then you can knock them all down. Uh, updates on CRISPR, which we have talked about. New genetic engineering techniques pose numerous risks. This coming from GM Watch. And again, everything we say, just like you were talking about, it's all always down in the show notes. The risks of CRISPR gene editing not restricted to the wide range of unintended effects that can be triver- triggered by the process of gene editing. James, we talked about this, the unintended effects, but even the things they're working on intentionally are also generating all types of errors. And we will include the PDF to this research for you in the show notes. Meanwhile, more transgenic monstrosities. Florida approves release of 750 million genetically modified mosquitoes amidst, you know, the public outcry, where basically the Florida Keys Mosquito Control District approved themselves to do the first ever U.S. release that they're openly telling us about, I suppose, of genetically modified mosquitoes. Speaking of uh, famine and pestilence, James, down here in New Mexico, this one just, this floors me, man. Suspect in Taos compound case found incompetent to stand trial. This is the whole article for you, four sentences. A judge has ordered the hospitalization for mental health treatment of a second member of an extended family confronting firearms, kidnapping, and terrorism-related charges. The case stems from a 2018 raid on a remote compound in New Mexico where a child's decomposed body was discovered. But who cares about that? Court records on Tuesday show 42-year-old Lucas Morton was found incompetent to stand trial by a federal judge and should be committed to a medical center for treatment. Case against Morton and four other co-defendants revolves around that abduction and death of a three-year-old boy and allegations of plotting against government institutions. James, I said it before, I'll say it then, now I, I believe it. Seems like it was some sort of intelligence operation where, you know, we've heard time and time again, the feds like to get maybe low-level folks to take part in their whole terror patsy scheme. And it seems like it got busted too soon. The feds and everybody and the cops, they let Gotti Schwartz of NBC ransack the crime scene. Oh, gosh, what's in here? Let's open drawers and look all around. And then they rolled all the folks up and sent them, I guess, to Albuquerque for a while. Maybe they're in Santa Fe, as that is the, the capital here. This all really seems like some sort of re or D programming now, and it is very strange. Meanwhile, United Arab Emirates sells out Palestine for Israel. And finally, James will just bring it all full circle. Australian drones to find people not wearing masks or driving too far from home. And this is where we are. James, I set them up. Knock them down. Well, actually, I will uh, raise the stakes a little. You, uh, you raised the specter of that GM Watch uh, article on the new genetic engineering techniques posing numerous risks, both intended and unintended. But how about this just hot off the presses from GM Watch? Glyphosate herbicide harms even GM glyphosate-tolerant soybeans. That's a new study coming out of the Environmental Sciences Europe. And this disturbing study that I just came across just before we, uh, we, we got on air today could injectable micro-robots one day run in your veins? This coming from the AFP that notes that uh, microscopic four-legged robots too small to see with the naked eye that walk when stimulated by a laser and could be injected into the body through hypodermic needles have been created and developed, at least the prototypes, or at least that's what we know about is being openly worked about, as I always point out. When wonder what technologies are already developed in the skunk works of the Pentagon, in the bowels of DARPA and other places like that. But anyway, they're announcing it. Yeah, the microscopic robots that can be injected through hypodermic needles are just about ready to roll out, guys. And oh, by the way, did we notice mandatory vaccines? Anyway, some interesting uh, moves happening there. Um, as you say, too much happening right now for us to possibly keep track of all of it, so we cannot do that, but we do try to keep track of some stories that hopefully uh, uh, other people are not uh, covering that we can bring some attention to. And let's bring it back to the note of actions and protests and things that are happening this weekend. I want to hear about them. If uh, if you know of anything that's going on, let's, let's find out about it and uh, let's 
keep bringing this information forward. It's only all working together that we can hope to try to keep up with this uh, flow of information. James, I, I foolishly yet entertainingly try to actually cover nearly every single thing on my morning monarchy broadcast. I've got it sort of compartmentalized, five different subjects, five days a week. I try and cover a little bit of everything. And again, I would really, impl- I mean, again, especially now, people have probably never been more receptive. Even if you find me super annoying, go get the links from the website, share the stories and go do more research. And that's, again... We've been trying to do this for, James, my 15th anniversary of doing Media Monarchy is coming up quite soon. So we'll wrap this thing up by mentioning, yeah, indeed, I do. I stream 40 hours a week, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, news, music, memes, and more. I try and do it like a radio station. So uh, people support me in all kinds of ways. Again, we don't actually really care so much of the platform. I know those become big flashpoints every now and again, and it'll probably happen again. Patreon, PayPal, crypto, post office box, any number of ways. And again, speaking of that post office box, James, before I throw it back to you, in in the batch of stuff, somebody actually sent me a euro the other day. It's kind of like, hmm, not sure what to do with this. I'm not (laughs) sure to exchange it at my bank. So I basically put it in the place where I've got precious metals that people have sent, all kinds of currency rolled up, all kinds of other ways. Again, Putting it literally under your mattress is way better than getting charged for the privilege of the banksters holding your money, James. And something we've basically talked about off air is something I think you, you're going to talk about right now. I appreciate you. That's right. And I was just thinking you could hold that euro for when you take your European vacation after you get your COVID pass or whatever they're going to roll out, right? Uh, well, anyway, um, yes, uh, there are people who are uh, often asking me, do you take cash? Do you take checks? Do you take money orders? I do not because they do not play well with the banking system over here in Japan. But if you are in the U.S. of A. and are uh, not uh, uh, interested in credit cards and online payments, fair enough, uh, you can direct your payments for corporate report membership to Media Monarchy. Media Monarchy does have a post office box there in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So direct your uh, check, money order, cash, whatever, to that location and James will forward it on to me. We'll get you hooked up for subscription that way. Obviously, you will also have to send an email address that I can contact you at um, to make sure that you're all hooked up with your membership. But there you go. So there's a different way to uh, to get on board with the corporate report if you want to and, and help out James as well. Um, I, so win-win for everyone. Absolutely. And, and there have been people that, that write both you and I about this sort of situation. Again, there was a guy basically rich last week or so. He was like, man, can I send you a check and you'll split it and you'll send Corbett half of it? Absolutely, buddy. Just again, it's again, it's so weird, James. You and I have never really talked this intricately about this kind of stuff to even have to be like, make sure you make the checks out to James Evan Pilato. Again, we'll include all of that in the show notes at the bottom of every page on MediaMonarchy.com. I do have my full mailing address for the post office box and it's again it's a fantastic way and i i mean almost without fail you hear from people you've never heard from before it's hearing from people that aren't on youtube that aren't on the controlled platforms that usually even are maybe a couple years older than you and i james and it's a whole other part of the segment whole other part of the audience it's fantastic it's a whole other part of the community so we will include, of course, all of that in the show notes. James, I appreciate you, buddy. Again, feels a little shilly. You and I aren't really that way, but these are odd times, and I think we got to do it. You know, so I, I, I didn't even think about that, but yes, make your checks and money orders payable to James Evan Pilato. Otherwise, we'll have no way to cash it. So yes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yes, looking forward to doing it again next week. We can't call, cover it all, but we'll cover as much as we can. So let's do it again. All right. Thanks, buddy. Take care. <laughs>